Today we're going to build this absolutely gorgeous walnut credenza on Combs Design. This credenza is a client commissioned piece. It's actually for my neighbor. She came to me a while back and wanted several pieces that can really just be in her family for generations to come and I think this absolutely fits the bill. Out of everything I have ever made, this has to be one of my favorite, if not my favorite piece. The best part about this piece was from the very beginning, this particular client had a complete understanding of really what goes into heirloom quality furniture, furniture that's going to be around forever, and understands the time and the cost and really everything that goes into it. Having that understanding already out of the way before you get into building something just makes the process so much easier. There was a lot of milling to be done, a lot of glue ups that took place in the front end before I could really even begin building. But the good news was I got to use my recently restored Stanley plane. Check that video out. That was a ton of fun to use. Once I had all my panels glued up, I got to work with some epoxy. I like using black tinted epoxy. I feel like it goes with walnut better and it doesn't stick out so much. It fills in with the darker spots in the grain. I use a heat gun to pull out any air bubbles and be sure there are no pockets of air inside the voids that I fill. And then I use a card scrape to knock down any high spots with the epoxy. One extra step that I've been taking lately is spraying down the wood between each grit of sanding. This raises the grain and I believe pulls out more surface imperfections and leads to a better surface finish. I got all my panels cut to size and then set my blade so I could start cutting all my angles. The top of this credenza is a trapezoidal shape, so depending on where the angle falls, I can either run the piece on the table or upright through a paneling jig to get my proper angle. And for pieces that were too big that would either hit my ceiling or not fit on the table saw, I simply use the track saw set at an angle. This project was the first time I got to use my new Festool Domino and it's just absolutely a pleasure to use. It makes cutting in all the mortises for these floating tenons so easy. For the top panel and these center dividers, I used a stopped dado, which I cut in with the router. I also cut in channels for LED strips and some sub channels that are under the joinery for wiring for the LEDs later. For my middle panel, I had to cut out a recess on the back, which I then flush trimmed and rounded over with the router. And this is used as a pass-through for a set-top box or a gaming console so the cables will drop down and connect to the electronics box. Speaking of which, I could go ahead and roughly assemble the electronics box or at least the back panel and components for it. I didn't want to trust my CAD drawings to get the exact measurements when I was cutting my joinery, so I built this to size so I could cut in my dado and be sure everything fit properly. We'll get into the electronics panel a little bit later in some more detail. I cut the rest of the dominoes and I went ahead and cleaned up the rest of the insides of the panels with the random orbital sander and some hand sanding to knock down the edges and make everything look nice and neat. Due to the intricacies of the inside of this credenza, I chose to pre-finish all of the insides of the panels before the glue up. I sprayed a satin lacquer and this has been a new technique I've been using and pre-finishing the inside makes assembly so much easier. The only extra step here is you just want to tape off all your joints. Here I'm just using a hot glue gun to glue my wiring for the LED strips into the sub-channel that I created. I'm experimenting with a new technique where I route another recess underneath my joinery and that's where all my cables go for internal wiring so you never see anything. The glue up went well, but for these upright panels I did not use any joinery on the bottom side. What I did is I flipped my piece after the glue up and drilled holes for some walnut dowels. What this allows me to do is take referential measurements off the actual piece because it will differ from what I draw up in my CAD programs. Getting referential measurements in real life will always yield better results than just following plans blindly. 
When you're talking about a CAD drawing, everything is precise down to a 64th of an inch, and when you're building stuff by hand, you are never going to be that precise. I used some epoxy in the LED strip channels and put in this aluminum strip that diffuses heat and holds a diffusion panel across the front. I soldered all my wiring in place and you can see these coming out of the joints and they are completely hidden. I put all my LED strips in place with tape and reinforced it with hot glue because that tape doesn't hold up over time. My LED wiring comes out of the back side of my piece and to make this look more presentable I cleaned it up with snakeskin and heat shrink. Later on we'll connect this to the electronics panel. With the entire top built I cleaned everything up, made sure all imperfections were gone and I sprayed it with more lacquer. And when I spray with lacquer, once it dries, I come back and buff out a coat of paste wax as well. With that, the top was more or less done and we could move on to the legs. I used my new CNC to cut out leg templates and built these oversized legs that are really chunky and don't have the curves I want, but they encompass the whole template. These oversized pieces are simply held together with dominoes and glue. And once all that dries, I was able to attach my template with some double-sided tape and route everything to size. I'll put a link in the description to the carpet tape I use for routing templates. It's really superior to the foam back tape that you can find and I've been loving it. I started off using my handheld router and a top bearing bit to get the basic shape. And once I got about halfway through, I switched over to my router table to finish off the routing. For the leg stretchers, I cut these to size roughly on the bandsaw and then used some templates to flush trim these as well. For the next step, I used a roundover bit to soften all my edges and I needed to use the roundover before assembly because there were places I couldn't get the router once everything was put together. I also marked all my joinery and holes where I'm going to attach this leg set to the top before assembly. I once again used dominoes and glue to get everything put together. And after everything was dried, I was able to sand, clean things up, and spray with some more lacquer. Next, I moved on to the drawers. These are made out of quilted maple, and whenever I'm looking for an accent wood to walnut, I don't reach just for maple, I go for quilted maple. The great thing about quilted maple is once you spray it with a lacquer, you get this quilted kind of folded fabric like finish and it is just absolutely gorgeous. It's a nice touch. It's a little bit more expensive, but when you're talking about a custom client piece, I absolutely think it's worth it. I got all my pieces cut roughly to size and cut in the dados for the bottom plywood drawer panel. Like I've said before, I do not use quarter inch drawer bottoms, but I use half inch drawer bottoms. I feel as these are superior, a lot stronger, and don't sag over time like quarter inch panels do. My favorite type of joinery for drawer boxes is the rabbit joint. So I cut these in with a dado blade. And before I could assemble the drawer boxes, I had to add an engraving to the side that the client requested. They had an image that has a special meaning in the family and I won't really get into it because that's a personal thing, but I engraved it and then I was able to cut in my dowel holes that will later receive a walnut plug as an accent. Because I don't have a ton of space, I use screws here as a clamp. Essentially, I temporarily hold everything in clamps, drive a screw under where the dowel plug will go, and I let my drawer box dry. Then I can come back with glue as you see here, put in my walnut plug, flush trim, and sand this down. If I had a bigger shop, I wouldn't do this, but this is just kind of a way I cheat and make the most use of my space. And I hope you joinery purist can understand. I moved back to my electronics enclosure after this, and it includes eight plugs for electronics that might be associated with this credenza, like a TV above or a game console on the shelf above the drawers. The electronics panel also features a dimmer knob for the internal lighting and an IEC connector with a fused switch. The walnut electronics panel was cut to custom size for the eight plugs, the dimmer knob, and the IEC. And I chose to build everything into this credenza because the last thing I want to see around a fine piece of furniture is power strips or cords or anything else. So to avoid this, I simply built it into the piece of furniture. I installed a shelf that can be used to hold larger power supplies or power bricks. 
And once all that was in place, I slid my walnut facade panel in, held it in place with quarter 20 hardware into threaded inserts, and it looks fantastic. Next, I need to cut in my recess and my rabbit joinery for the back panel. But because of my cable coming out the back because of the internal joinery, I couldn't just run my router directly on the back side of the piece. So I cut some plywood risers and I ran my router along this and cut the pieces and cut the recesses just the same. With that being said, I went ahead and cut down some quarter inch walnut plywood to use as the back panel. This is the only time with the exception of the drawer bottoms that plywood is used and it's really good because it accommodates the expansion of the piece really well and saves on weight. The client wanted a personalized inscription on the back, so I headed over to Make Nashville to use their laser. Originally, I was going to put this laser inscription directly on the walnut panel. However, I was getting artifacts that I didn't like on this particular plywood. So instead of trying to sand these artifacts off, damaging the veneer, I chose to make these medallions with the inscriptions out of the quilted maple that I used for the drawers. To clean these up, I rounded over the edge, and then I glued them directly on the back panel, and they ended up looking great. I used wood glue for the permanent hold and super glue to act as a clamp while the wood glue dried. Next, I moved on to the acrylic shelves. These are simply pieces of half inch acrylic, and I used a map gas torch to flame polish all of the edges. This was my first time flame polishing and this technique worked very well. I stacked some pieces of plywood together to make a drilling jig and this allows my drill bit to stay parallel with the bottom of the credenza so the acrylic shelf sits flat. The acrylic panels had to be cut with a slight angle on one side to accommodate the trapezoid shape of the inside of these openings. Once I cut that and inserted them, I was also able to place my back panels. The next part of this build was the most nerve-wracking, and this was working on the drawer fronts. To accomplish these drawer fronts, I took some pieces of straight-grained walnut and veneered some burled walnut on top. The theory here is the straight-grained walnut will be very stable over time and won't warp and have issues like this burled walnut could potentially have. Overall, this will lead to a more stable drawer front long-term. We had some extremely high humidity days here in Nashville. So the first thing I had to do was use some water and a press jig that I made to flatten all these pieces of veneer. After that, I used a cold press method instead of a vacuum method to apply this veneer to the actual drawer fronts. This method is as simple as adding glue to your backer board and to the back side of the veneer. To clamp everything together, I put all my pieces sandwiched between some plywood boards and put the same calls that I used to flatten the veneer on the top and bottom side. After 24 hours, I essentially had a Christmas day and unwrapped all of my drawer fronts and things came out perfectly. I cut these down to size and after I did that, I was able to use some more black epoxy to fill in any voids and imperfections. I used a lot of tape to keep the glue from seeping through. this led to less cleanup and allowed me to use epoxy to fill in voids. You won't see it here, but getting these drawer panels cut perfectly to size was a process that took probably four or five hours, even though it was three drawer fronts. Getting everything perfectly dialed in is really just a process, and it's a lot more of a process than I can show in a simple highlight video like this. I finished everything with a lacquer like I did the rest of the project, and I got everything installed. Finally, I broke out the ironing table and the iron, and I made some drawer inserts that will essentially provide padding in the bottom of specific drawers where there are going to be fragile items. The velvet used here is actually some fabric that belonged to the client's mother, and she gave her to make into a dress. The client never made a dress, but she thought it would be great to sit in the bottom of the drawer, and it's cool because you're keeping this family gift within the family. After I adhered the fabric to the backing foam, I used some black chipboard to create a bottom and keep everything nice and clean in case she ever has to pull these out or not use them. Finally, I drilled some holes for some 3D printed cable management. 
I put all this in place, zip tied everything down, and that's the build. I am so happy with the outcome of this credenza. It incorporates so many timeless looks from mid-century modern furniture. Let me know what you think of this piece down in the comments below. This has to be one of my all-time favorite builds so far. I have some awesome builds coming up. I'm building some matching end tables to go with this, as well as some new furniture from my house. So you guys will definitely want to stick around and check those builds out. Thank you guys so much for sticking around and checking out this episode. Please subscribe. That is the best way you can help me continue to make free content here on YouTube. And I will catch you guys on the next episode of Combs Design.